Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome to beautiful Great Missenden, where I'm on my final ride on the Royal Enfield HN TR 350, or Hunter 350 as I prefer to call it. I've been riding this bike for uh, the last couple of weeks, I've got to know it as well as I can. And in this video, I'm going to bring you my sort of final summing up, the lessons I've learned about riding the bike. Not just the good things, but the bad things too. No bike is perfect. There are pros and cons of this bike, so stick around and stay tuned if you're interested in the Hunter 350. And uh, I'll bring you the lessons I've learned about the bike. So without further ado, let's crack straight on and let's go through the negatives, the stuff that I'm not so keen about with the bike. One of my uh, pet hates on motorcycles is when the mirrors vibrate and I'm sad to say the Hunter 350 does suffer from that a little bit at low speeds. So I don't know if you can see on the camera here, I'm in uh, third gear at the moment and I am on a bit of a bumpy road, but the mirrors are a little bit vibrating. I can see out of the bouquet, I can see what's behind me, that's the most important thing. They do, they do vibrate a little bit, so that's something I'm not too keen on the bike. Once you get the speed up and you're in higher gears, it's not so much of an issue. But at certain rev ranges, you do get a little bit of uh, buzziness in the mirrors. You don't feel it through the handlebars or anything like that, it's smooth. But the mirrors do, uh, do vibrate and blur a little bit. So I'm not so sure about the instrumentation on this bike. This uh, single dial here, I actually prefer uh, the twin dial look on retro bikes. And this particular one, it just looks a bit cheap to me. If we turn her on, look, we can watch the sort of sweepy action. It's got everything you need. It's got a proper fuel gauge, I'm glad to say, at the top. Uh, it's got a gear indicator as well. So it's got everything you need. But I don't know, there's just something about it that just doesn't look as good as other Royal Enfield uh, instrumentation that I've seen. So another little bit of a disappointment on the bike and something that kind of links with the earlier point about instrumentation and not liking that so much on the bike is the lack of the tripper navigation system. Do you remember a few years back Royal Enfield made quite a play that they were going to put the uh, tripper nav system on their bikes? Well, it doesn't seem to be on the Hunter 350. There's a space for where it should be here. Look, I'm pretty sure the reason why that dial is mounted over to the left is because the tripper goes here. But for some reason it ain't there. I mean, I think on the website it says there's provision for the tripper. I can't see any bracketry or anything like that. And I'm sure at some point you could get one fitted. So I don't kind of know what's happened with that. They kind of seem to have disappeared off the earth, don't they? But no tripper on the Hunter 350 at the moment. Right, I'm just popping into this car park here, which is very busy on a Sunday. Just to talk about my next thing that I don't like on the bike so much. And it's a very small minor point, this, but it's something that I think about every time I stop the bike. Let me just uh, turn around here. And that is that the uh, side stand on it is very stiff. Not hideously so, but if I just stop here, if you look at it, it's got a big old uh, lip on it. I hope you can see that big bit that you can kick down. So it's easy to get hold of, but it's quite a push compared to other stands to get down. So it's a minor point, I know, but uh, putting the side stand down on the Hunter 350, it's a bit stiff. And to put it back up again, you find yourself kind of kicking it a bit to get enough momentum to get it up. So minor point, but that's something I'm not too keen on the bike. So here's something that I don't like about the bike that's a little bit odd that I've not really come across on bikes before, and that's the routing of the throttle cable. Check this out here. Look, it comes down here, and it goes through this loopy bit here, round, obviously, to where the throttle connects to the engine, just here. But when you're sat on the bike, I'm not sure it'll show up so well on the camera, but you see it just sort of hangs down in that gap there, like that. It's just a bit odd. I don't know why it's not rooted like it is on other bikes around this way. It's just a weird bit of route in that. Really small minor point, but it's just something that annoys me because I'm sat there looking at it all the time. Something else that I've added to my list of negative points about the bike as I've been riding it. It's a, again, a very minor point, but it's just something that annoyed me when I was riding the bike at night. And that is the rotary light switch on here. Now, I do actually like the switch gear on here. It's got a sort of a retro feel. And I like the sort of bake light look of them and the, and the fact that they are rotary is just a little bit different. But in terms of the light switch on the left, when you want to go from dip to main beam, that I find is a bit fiddly at night. Now obviously at night time, you can't see where your finger's going. And if you only ride the Hunter 350, you get used to it in muscle memory. But I ride a lot of different bikes because of what I do. And I just found when riding at night, getting that switch and just finding its position to put it between full and dip just took a bit of getting used to. Minor, minor point, but something else, just a, a negative that uh, I've felt when I've had the bike. All right, enough with the whinging. All those negative points really, I think, are quite minor. Let's get on to the positive points of the bike. 
So something I really do love about the uh, Hunter 350 are the looks of the bike. I mean, look at this thing. It just looks like a motorcycle should look, doesn't it? I mean, it is a, a sort of retro styled bike, but it's very much a modern motorcycle. But I do love the fact that it's a, uh, you know, a single air cooled bike as well. And it looks properly like a motorcycle, doesn't it? So as far as I'm concerned, the looks of these, this bike is definitely a winner. And also the build quality too on this is really, really good. Royal Enfield have really brought the build quality on over the last few years. And uh, that's a couple of things that I really like about the bike. One thing I really do like about the uh, Hunter 350 is the sound that this engine makes. Now, you may not be able to hear it very well through the helmet. In fact, let me pop the visor up for this one in the hope that you might hear it better, I don't know. But uh, it's just got that one little exhaust on the side here and just as you roll on, I think it sounds fantastic. And for me, the way a bike makes you feel, the sort of visceral feelings you get from it, part of that is made by the sound. And you wouldn't need an aftermarket exhaust on this. The sound on the Hunter 350 is definitely on the pros list, something I really like about the bike. Actually, while I think about it, let's do the sound off the bike as well. Let's do a bit of a Freddy Dobbs. So let's turn her on here using this splendid rotary switch. Here we go. And I'll put the mic down by the exhaust so you can hear her. Stand by. I think that's a really nice noise. Something else that uh, is a definite bonus on this bike, it being a 350, is the fact that actually the engine is small. So if you're gonna come and ride on roads like this, these are the sort of roads that I think this bike is ideally suited to, you know, back lanes on a Sunday ride. You don't need any more uh, engine size than this. The 350 is just perfect, because you can really enjoy it around these lanes and you can absolutely thrash it thoroughly enjoy everything the engine's got and you're not going to be going at ridiculous speeds now if you're on one of the batch of super naked bikes and you're absolutely winding it up here you'll be doing 60 or 70 miles an hour and you'll be you know in for jail time if you got the court here I'm doing 30 miles an hour and I'm having fun now, of course that applies to all small capacity bikes not just the hunter but uh, I do love that about the bike this particular engine size and power is perfect for back lane riding like this. Something else that is really good about this bike is its price. Uh, this comes in at £3,599 for the basic dapper colour bikes or £3,679 for the fancier rebel colours. This is one of the rebel colours. Now something I really do like on this bike is the tight turning circle on it. Now I did, uh, I did my in-depth review I did my lugging about test here in the in the station and showed you me moving it about off the bike but the thing is it is a really tight turning circle on here so look let me get close to these uh, to this um, pole here I'm in first gear okay maybe I'm not doing this very well but uh, just to show you how tight a turning circle you've got on here if you're doing moto Jim Carner or something you'd absolutely win on this I think this is the tightest turning circle of any bike I've ever ridden, or well, certainly one of them. I don't remember any being tighter than this. It's absolutely incredible. Now this is being recorded on the GoPro, which is wide angle, so it'll make this look like I'm turning really wide, probably. But trust me, I'm not. It's a tight turning circle, and that is a real plus point on this because it makes it easy to live with. Now, if you're a shorty like me, something else you'll very much value about the Hunter 350 is its low 790 millimeter seat height. Check that out, look. I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg, bit of a shorty. I can get my feet flat on the deck either side, no problems at all on this. I love the fact that this is a very accessible bike for people of all sorts of heights. One of the things that makes me love the current batch of retro style bikes, and indeed older bikes generally, bikes that look like motorcycles like this one does, is the fact that you get great comfort on it and that is one of the things for my pros list on this it's got a really comfy seat and the riding position is super comfy i'm sat upright my legs have got a little bit of a acute bend in but nothing extreme by any means it feels like uh well like a triumph bonneville really if you ride that so you are you are sat upright it's like sitting in an armchair the comfort on here is beautiful it's something that i really like about the bike you could take this touring you could ride it all day long and you would not be uncomfortable. So another one for the pros list. 
And I suppose one of the biggest overall positives for me with the Hunter 350 is the fact that it is very easy to live with. It's got, uh, you know, it's low weight, it's easy to move around, it's got that brilliant turning circle, it's super comfortable, it's got a low seat height, it's easy to get on and off. It's a really easy bike to live with, and for me, that, and also puts a big smile on your face. So uh, all round a thumbs up, I think, for the Hunter 350. So well, there we have it, that's the uh, lessons I've learned riding this bike for the last couple of weeks. Okay, it's not quite the same as owning the bike, but I have ridden this bike unusually a lot more than I normally would a loan bike. Often I get loan bikes in from manufacturers, I ride them to sort of assess them and do the reviews that I'm doing. But this one I've actually taken out just for fun, just for the hell of it, without filming. I've gone out with Mrs. Flyer on this, not with her on the back, but she's been on her bike, we've been out for coffees and things. And uh, I've just really enjoyed having the bike around, which is unusual and a, and a mark of the bike. So for me, with its great price as well, its great comfort, the sound of it, the looks of it, you'll notice that the things that I said I didn't like the bike, that I didn't like about the bike, are really minor points. Hello. <laughs> and in the main, it's just a great fun place to be. It puts a smile on your face. And that's the most important thing about a bike, isn't it? So if this is the first time you've been to my channel and you're interested in this bike, don't forget I have got other videos on this bike on the channel. Go and check those out. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along in future as well. I don't just do bike reviews here on the channel, but I do trips and tours at home and abroad. Bits and pieces about looking after your bike. Basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I'll try and cover it here on the Mission and Flight. It'd be great to have you along next time. All right, that's it for now. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mission and Flyer. Cheerio.